What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Kits Concept VF-1S God of Flame or as Transformers fans know him, the G1 Jetfire. So this is actually mostly a repaint of another Robotech figure from Kits Concept. They have the VF-1S in the black, yellow, and white and they've basically done it in the red to make it look like the Jetfire. Jetfire has a long history. It's actually a toy that was taken from the Macross line. I'm not going to go into that here, but it's kind of funny because this is licensed from Bandai. And, you know, Bandai is kind of, you know, making it look like Jetfire. They didn't put any Autobot logos on here, obviously, but it is the same you know, deco and toy colors. Now, this was sent to me by Carl S. Thanks to Carl for allowing me to take a look at this. This is a relatively delicate figure and it requires some, some care. So I appreciate him being able to take a risk on me taking a look at this. Now, I'm going to do my best to be careful with it. And it does come, you know, not fully configured. So there's some things you have to do out of box, as you could just see right there. And I actually did purchase this figure. So let me tell you what happened there. I purchased it from Kits Concept themselves. And this was back in the middle of 2022. And it was due to be shipped out in November. So November, end of November, December, right before Christmas, I emailed them and said, hey, you know, when is this getting shipped out? Just curious. And I didn't hear back. So I wrote another email in January and again, didn't hear back. So I thought maybe they're still working on it. Uh, February rolled around and it was turning out about to six, come up to six, six months. And that's when your protection for PayPal kind of expires. So I was kind of getting antsy and I said, hey, you know, when is this shipping? And it still didn't hear back. So I knew this was starting to ship out for some people. So I wrote to PayPal and I said, hey, I have this, this purchase from Kits Concept, having her back. And immediately I got a tracking number through PayPal from Kits Concept. I was like, okay, great. They're going to ship it. So I waited a week or two weeks and never updated. The tracking number never changed. So then I wrote back to PayPal and said, hey, what's up with this? And within a day or two, after a little bit of complaining, they refunded me. <laughs> and I never got the figure. The tracking number was fake. I'm not sure why they sent me that tracking number that didn't work, but never got the figure. So I don't know what went on. I'm not sure why they chose not to send it, but ultimately I didn't get it. Now, I didn't go back and I could have purchased from a retailer with, like Carl did from either Show Z Store or BBTS. There were a couple others, uh, but my channel partner, Chosen Prime, didn't have this available. So I just never went back and repurchased it. Um, and that's why I don't have this figure. You know, I am a huge Jetfire fan, but, you know, unfortunately, I just really didn't really trust the company after what happened. So if you are going to buy this, I do recommend using one of those retailers because your purchase is protected with them versus, you know, this company, which I don't know much about. So there's a lot of things you need to do out of package to get them set up. So first, pull the feet down, open them up. Same on this one, pull the foot down, open it up. Uh, make sure the legs are straight. We're gonna come to the back here. You can see this is misconfigured. Open up the wings, just push those outwards like that. And bring this down. As you open up this backpack, it's on a double hinge, so you wanna pull it forward and push it down. You don't wanna just slam it down because it'll have trouble and it'll collide here. Bring this down, you're gonna rotate it inwards just a little bit. It'll be very tight when you first get it because it's painted, so the paint might kind of hold it up. But you wanna rotate it just enough to clear right here. Then you're gonna put this down, now you can straighten it out. Bring this back up, and I recommend putting a piece of plastic or paper in between here just to prevent paint rub between the wing and that backpack. All right, and just sandwich that paper in there. Right, come back to the front here, and we need to get this chest pegged in, but there's actually a separate piece that most people are probably going to miss, so you want to take this, this is in the package, and what this is, is his abs. So it's actually going to go right here, a little tab right there, it's going to fit right in this spot. So get this kind of wedged in here, and it actually, the arm you can see, kind of fits around that peg. And do the other side as well. Get this in here. And there, the instructions don't even tell you about this. I, I don't understand how they could leave out such a such a 
key detail of what this is. You know, why not explain this to people? All right, anyway. So once you have those two in there, make sure they're like settled in. And close this back down. Uh, and this, this should be pegged in on the back here. All right, make sure that's all lined up. Bring this down. The way this tabs in, there's a little notch right there and there's a peg on the inside of his legs. So you want to get one of those in and then you're going to get the other one in. So hold this all together with your thumb. Come down to here, get one peg in on this side. You can see I have that one in. And this one you're going to push it up until it pegs in. And I do recommend having the wings up so you're not putting your fingers on the wing and accidentally putting pressure on that. But bring this up and get this peg into that tab. And it can be tricky. Um, I actually phoned a friend on this one because I was like, how do you do this? And eventually I got it, but it is tricky at first. Okay, so it went in, but that's it. That's what holds the entire thing together. All right, come back to here, and I think we lost our little paper. Let's put that back. I have just a piece of paper from like a packaging, fan toys packaging. Bring these back down. Rotate your arm, 90 degrees, and you can straighten that up, straighten the head up. Uh, there is an option part here for the robot mode, which are these. These can basically cover up the intakes here, which are primarily meant for jet mode, but if you want to cover them up, take this part here and just pop it in there. Getting it out is a little bit of a pain. I recommend using a spudger or a fingernail to grab the top there. Um, don't push it in too hard because getting it out is a pain. A lot of things are actually a pain to, to remove on this. So you're going to need a spudger no matter what with this figure. But put those in there to cover up those hip pieces. And now you've got the fully formed robot mode. And I will say the paint job does look nice. you got the red details, some tampos, danger, you know, the metallic red looks really nice, black paint. UN Spacey, which is, you know, Marcross style marking. There's the actual cross logo. You have 100. All these little tempo details, accents. Everything looks really nice. It's just doesn't feel so nice. Let's go over the articulation. The head is on a rotation here, but actually it's just on a peg. So if you pull it up, you can see there's just a slot and a peg. Put that back. You kind of have to hold it here and rotate that back down. But you do have that rotation. It can go up and down because there's a joint here inside the neck. It's a very strange joint. So it can go pretty far down, pretty far back. The ears can rotate. Um, mine, this one is tight and this one is loose. Um, so just be careful with those. You can do the classic, you know, forward gun style look if you want. And you tend to hold up here, don't hold there, hold down on the bottom if you're going to rotate it because these don't feel so so secure. So just you know, give it some extra love there. For the arms, they rotate all the way around on a friction joint. There is a butterfly joint here, um, but it just feels so flimsy. So just be careful with it. But there's a butterfly, a reverse butterfly, a forward butterfly. Mainly for transformation, but it does give you that movement. Shoulder goes up to there on two hinges. And the actual shoulder pad can be, you know, moved around. You have a rotation at the bicep. It's very tight. So that's why I'm holding up here. You have a double jointed elbow. It, it gets caught up on itself. but um, You do get that bend there. For the hands, you have a rotation. These are also on a peg. So these hands actually are necessary for transformation, but they're terrible for actually using in robot mode. So unfortunately, that's the hands you get. You can take these off and replace them. I definitely recommend replacing them. They do have a little bit of articulation, just the thumb basically moves and the fingers move ever so slightly, but it's so thin and ugly that I recommend replacing it, but you do need to put these back for transformation. So these are on a ball joint, you're just going to have to wiggle it in. And there you go, now you have that. You do have some alternate hands, you have the straight hand, and they do look nice, they're good looking hands. 
they're sculpted and detailed. They have a little bit of a wash on them. You also have a fist, which I never find useful, but you can use that. For the other side, we'll take off this as well. And again, you have a fist, sculpted and detailed nicely. You have an open palm, which I'll, I guess I'll put on there for now. Or you have the gripping hand, which actually I'm going to put this one on because this one is better with the gun. And for the lower body, you have a ball joint for the hips so they can rotate in and out. They don't really go up and down just due to the <laughs> limitation of the wing being in the way. But you can get in and out and forward and backward just a bit. There is a tilt here at the thigh and then here down at the knee. So there's actually two. So you can get him kind of walking, but it's a very awkward looking pose. Straighten those up. On the feet, you have a rotation forward and backwards. A very, very slight tilt. But like I mentioned, it is rubbing and it does leave paint behind. So you want to do that, you know, on a limited basis. All right, now let's take a look at his accessories. So starting off, since we just looked at the hands, We'll take a look at the gun. So just say you went spacey, you got some paint, silver, black. It does have a battery compartment here. It does come with the batteries. Now, all of the battery compartments are very kind of a pain. It does come in a container like this. It takes two batteries in here. And getting this compartment off is kind of tough. So once you get the screw out, use a small screwdriver or a spudger to pop that panel off. Get the batteries in there, and then you can flip this switch right here. And you get that light. Looks all right. Nice that they gave you the batteries with it. That's kind of a nice touch. And to get this in the hand, it will fit in the existing hands. But, I mean, these hands really suck. They're really bad. So, I mean, it does have a tab on it and you can use it. But I recommend using these hands that are on and you know, I've already put on there. But just to show you, you can get it on here. So first, take the hand off. It's easiest to ma manipulate it when you have it off. You're going to rotate it like this. And the trigger finger is going to actually go through the trigger guard. And it can be tricky to get it all <laughs> rotated at the same time. But basically, you want it like that. So he's holding it. Then, get this back in. Pull this back. And now he's got his classic blaster. And that looks nice. You get a little strap for the gun if you want to use it. Me personally, I don't. But in order to attach this, it's uh, basically a squared off edge. So you're going to slide this back into here. Everything is kind of annoying with attaching things. But patch it in there. And now you can use that. You get the little strap. Um, my personal preference is to not have that. But if you're a stickler for that, you can put that on there. All right now, let's take a look at his armor. So the armor is actually quite interesting. It needs a little bit of assembly. So let's start with the legs. So here's the leg piece. Again, the batteries are right there. I've already put them in. You can see there's two batteries. It is detailed beautifully. You got the copper, silver, black paint, it's red plastic on this side, and then the cover that we're putting on it. Even that's beautiful. Nice metallic paint. Nice details there. So make sure you put the batteries in. If you want this on, you're going to have to turn it on before you put this cover in because the, the switch gets covered up. So make sure you turn it on. I'm going to turn it back off just so I don't waste the batteries. But you do want to turn it on before you put the cover on. The little tab right here, so you're going to catch that tab first. And then you're going to push forward and down on the other side and that tab will come through. To take this back off I recommend a spudger between here and here and just pop that apart. Alright so now that we have that together we can take this piece here so this is basically goes on the back of the leg and the paint on here does make it hard the first few times to get this on here but you're going to take this back piece slide it down and then that top peg is going to go in. So slide it in and then push that in. It does snap in pretty securely. By the way, taking this all out, use a spudger. 
That's really the only way. All right, so there you go. That did snap on quite nicely. Right now we got the legs on there. We'll take care of the arms. So we're gonna take this here. And I don't know if it matters. Uh, no, it definitely matters. So make sure you have the right side. You want this gun facing forward and you want this on the inside. So looks like this is the right one. Get this over one side and then push it on like that. Taking those off again, another pain <laughs> to actually get it back out. Anyway, same on this side, get that over and then peg that in. And the last piece here is the backpack. So come to the back here and we're gonna take this piece here. You're gonna fold up this little panel here. This can be tight when you first get it because there's paint and that's holding it up, but fold that upwards. This is gonna slide under here, so make sure you have, you're holding it like this with these two pegs on the bottom and then these on the outside. This is gonna slide up and under here and you might need to widen this out just to get it under there. But this needs to slide up under here, but there you go. Now we have that backpack adapter. Now I'm gonna take these, there's three holes here, three pegs here, so line those up and peg it in. Do be careful with the edge of the wing there. Same on this one. Line those up. Get that in there. And of course we could turn on all of the electronics if we wanted to. But there you go. There is got a flame fully armed up. And I do think it looks good. Um, it's a little bit unsteady with all the weight, uh, but it does look good. We do get a stand with this guy, so stand looks like this. You got that red paint. Just gotta make sure he doesn't fall down. Red paint with translucent, and then you got black on the outside. You're gonna take this. This is gonna plug into here. Come to the backpack here and rotate this down. And this is gonna basically end up sitting on top and this little lip is gonna sit underneath. Honestly, it's not the best. It really doesn't work very well. So I don't recommend it for robot mode, but it does show that you can do this in the book. So I feel like I have to show you, but I just don't think this is um, you know, a good idea. <laughs> it just kind of hangs on top. And for some size comparisons, there it is next to the G1 Jetfire and my custom Fans Toys Phoenix Jetfire. And he's pretty small, actually. And I don't have my New Age version with me right now. It's out on loan, but here's a different colored New Age version. It's only slightly larger than the New Age. It's, it's actually relatively small. So the G1 is actually even bigger. It's just kind of funny. The size here it is 170 second scale but there you go for comparisons all right now let's get this guy transformed into his jet mode and like i mentioned before you don't really want to be transforming this unless you absolutely have to so if you're planning to display this in jet mode then i recommend transforming it to jet mode and leaving it if you're not planning to use jet mode then don't even bother with the transformation it really is just um you know too much stress on what's already a delicate figure so let's get started. You do have to have all the armor removed. I guess you could transform with the armor on, but I don't recommend it. You also need these smaller hands. Speaking of the hands, let's start with that. So you're gonna come to the top here, open up this panel. So we have to rotate the hand and then rotate it in here. You can close up that panel. It should tab into the top there. And that's one. So let's do this one. Open this up, rotate the hand. Fold that in, make sure the fingers are folded to the right level. It just doesn't feel great, but that's how it works. And then close that up. And now those arms are kind of ready. Come to the bottom here. We're going to unpeg all of this. So open up these wings. That just gives you some room to work down here. We're going to unpeg these thighs from here. So once you get one out, it'll just kind of release all of this. Come to the back here. We're going to open this up. 
Remember to lift this up. It's on a double hinge before you bring it down. Come back to the front. We're going to open up here. You're going to remove these ab filler pieces. They're not needed and not used and they won't actually fit in the jet mode. And while we're at it, we might as well move these hip fillers that we put in there to cover up the intakes. So it should look like that. Next, we're going to open this up and take care of all this. So we're going to fold these ears down. And like I mentioned before, don't hold on the top, hold on the bottom when you rotate. Right, so get those pointed forwards like that. We're going to come to the back here. This panel is supposed to lift up. It, when you first get it, it's going to be very tight. So I recommend holding here, put a thumb right here, and then lift up here, slowly work this up. It'll be very tight when you first get it. You need to lift that up. That gives you enough clearance to get the head through all the way to the other side. Bring the head around. Uh, make sure it clears everything. I'm going to rotate the head 180 degrees and just sit it right there for now. And close that back down. And this is going to accordion backwards. So this is on a double hinge right here. I'm going to take this black cover. So that's what was covering the cockpit here. That's going to accordion back and in and underneath there. And then you take this, this is going to accordion back. And make sure that made its way all the way back as far as it goes. There's actually a stopping point for that black piece. So if you don't get it all the way back, you'll actually have trouble later. <laughs> Alright, now this is going to come back and tab into here. Make sure this actually makes its way. And this is going to tab up into here. And these pieces, the white pieces, are going to come upwards. They're actually going to peg in underneath, so there's two tabs, so make sure those actually peg in. And now you have a nice smooth surface here on the top. The head, the chin is actually going to sit in the little circle right there, so line that up, get the chin in there. And that is how it looks, you know, you can still see the visor, but it has these guns down here. All right, next we'll take care of the legs, so we're going to rotate here around this joint. Unpeg it from here, it says tabbed in there, it's going to come to the other side here. I mean, all the way down. This is going to come up and end up sitting here. There's a hook tab on the inside and then a peg right there. That's going to make its way underneath. So bring this all the way down. And whenever you're doing this transformation, just look and make sure everything's clearing. Bring this underneath and then peg it under there. So it should look like this. And you'll end up kind of holding this piece because you're going to kind of pivot on it. But same on this side, bring this down and make, make again, make sure all of this is collapsed down. Open up this thigh, bring it all the way down like that. Again, hold here, bring this all the way down. That's going to give you enough clearance to do some work under here. And actually, this is the Gerwalk mode. I'm not going to spend too much time, but here's your Batroid mode or Gerwalk mode, whatever you want to call it. I think it's dumb, but you can't do it. There you go. Alright, so now let's work on the rest. We're going to come to the bottom here. Unfurl these shoulder bits, the butterfly joint. This is going to rotate on this piece of plastic right there. There's basically a bar. It's very thin, so be very careful. Rotate that all the way in. It's really got to go far. Um, and you think that's that's it? That's not it. It's got to keep going. I'm going to fold this down, and that's going to keep going. And I hate how this works, but it's got to make its way all the way in so it ends up underneath this bar, right? So it's got to be like that. All right, same on this side, open this up, rotate this down. There is a little stopper point, so you got to lift it up over that stopper. Again, thin plastic and unnatural motion doesn't add up for a good feel. And again, you think that's it, but that's not actually it. It's got to go a little bit further. 
So you can use a spudger or something to get in here and make sure it made its way all the way flat. These arms are going to come together. There's a tab right here so you can just peg it together like that. Bring these straight and back. Right. In the meantime, your legs might have unpegged, so just get these pegged. All right, now we've got the legs hold right here so that you can put some pressure down to close that gap. There's a tab right here. So the tab's going to fit into the leg. And basically make sure it's collapsed, but it's going to tab into right there. Same on this side. Straighten that up. Hold here, and again, that likes to pop out, but rotate down on this and get this tab into the back of the leg. Close up the feet. In push them in on both sides. Take this backpack here. Again, remember to pull it up on the double hinge so it can clear down here. It's got to come all the way around. We're going to open up this side, pull this you're going to rotate this a little bit so it gets up and then rotate it back and put it back down. There's a slot on each side so the legs are just going to work their way into that slot. It is tight due to the paint so you might have to give it a little bit of extra squeeze but don't do it too hard. Bring these wings back a little bit. Come to the bottom and we'll take care of these landing gear. They're very annoying. So come to the bottom, we're going to open up these doors. You may need a spudger, so I recommend having a spudger handy. Leave it. Oh, it helps if you push here, I guess. All right, so push here and then use your spudger to grab it. It does have a locking point. <laughs> it does have a locking point, so if you pull it forward, it should lock into place right there. That's a nice little thing. I'm glad they did that. On the back here, you're going to open up these hip skirts to the outside. This one's going to go to the inside. They're opposites, so just make sure you get them the right direction. And make sure you open them all the way. Then get a spudger in here so you can get this wheel out. It is very irritating to get it, but it's spring-loaded. So you got to get it past that spring point. Close that one back up. So that's one, we'll do the other one off camera. All right, and there is the VF1S in jet mode. I will say it does look really beautiful. It's got that nice metallic red and black. Nice detailing all throughout. There's little tampos and accents kind of all throughout. You do get the skull and crossbones there, which is kind of a Maycross thing. You know, not very jet fiery, but you could probably cover that with a uh, Autobot symbol if you wanted this to be more like a jet fire. Here's the back. All in all, a good looking jet. Just uh, getting here and the feel of it. You know, once it's in jet mode, it actually feels pretty solid compared to the robot mode. But getting it here does not feel good. I got some really nice painted red detail, silver. Oh, that looks good. You do have a lot of features here, so we're going to try to cover them all. First off, you can't open the cockpit. Just be gentle. You can't really open it too far. Um, it goes about up to there. <laughs> Don't pull it too far because you might actually break it. It does not feel very good. There is a pilot in here. It was hidden in the robot mode because it was covered up with that little black piece. But there's the pilot. Forget the name. I think his name is Roy Fokker for VF1S, but for the red one, I forgot the name. But anyway, he's got some paint on him. Here's the back. Kind of cool that they gave you that. But he can basically just stay in there. There is detail in the cockpit. There's a lot of painted detail in there. Does look cool. We can move the wings back and forth like I showed you earlier. Just be careful, move them gently. And you can attach some missiles here. Now, it's a little weird because the missiles and the surface of the wings are painted. So what ends up happening is they really just don't fit. So there's a little peg right here. The peg's supposed to go into the slot. But just due to the paint on both, 
it really doesn't go again this is not my figure I'm not gonna push it uh, but in theory you can attach this if you give enough force then getting it out is probably the issue at that point so I don't know if I would push it to be honest I don't think it's worth it they don't look that good anyway they look fine but I'm not sure I'd push it but I just can't get these go in I'm not gonna force it you also get a bigger missile which we'll take a look at when we go into the armored mode but these same thing except they're not painted so they fit a little bit better if you just line up the peg and give it a little bit of a twist ah, it just feels terrible but that's about the best I can show you without forcing it on there and I don't want to force it you also get these single ones which will again will plug in here and I recommend twisting it on and not pushing and forcing it just to get it on wiggle it on but it's barely hanging on and I don't want to push it so you have that option there you also can of course armor him up now before we do that I'm going to show you the stand so here's the flight stand it has the red paint there and then just black plastic you're going to take this you know rotate this all the way down like that open this up this is going to insert into there and that's kind of how you want it configured now you can kind of angle this but this peg right here is going to fit into this little slot here and then this is going to just sit on the back it's not the best it's not like secure or anything I mean it does sit there nicely it's just I guess it's light enough that it doesn't matter, but it doesn't feel super, super secure. And you can, in this stand, take the gun and you can stick the front into there. And there's a little slot on the back, so you're going to pull this through there. And basically you can display him with the gun on underneath. I don't know, it's not, not the greatest, <laughs> but... You can do that. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's even attached. But you can do that. And you can aim these, you know, guns on the ears. All right, now we'll get the armor on here. And it's a little tricky to get it all on, but you can do it. So go ahead and unpeg the tail fin from the legs. And you can lift this up. Be careful right there. This is the friction point where it can it can rub together. We're gonna close this, rotate it down, and then it's gonna fit under there, and then rotate this one down. And it should fit like that. Rotate this up, pulling upwards and rotating. And like I mentioned before, you can use a piece of plastic or paper just to protect the paint here. I would recommend doing that. And then I can close that up. Slide this back. And down into here. It's just such a tight fit. Everything's tight, especially when it's first being used. But get that pegged in there. Like I mentioned, turn it on before you put the armor on. Attack, catch the back and then peg that in and now this you can see there's a slot right there so you want to bring this down the whole leg bring this back up one click and that's going to plug in right there and make sure you don't unpeg all this ah, it's just kind of a pain but line this up and get that pegged into there and that'll kind of hold it together now so instead of pegging the legs into the tail fin you're pegging it into the bottom there but there you go there's the super mode I think it really does look good you can now grab the stand again get this kind of plugged in where it's supposed to go and I think this is what it's all about right getting it on the stand with all the armor the fast pack and yeah that really does look good now this is G1 Jeff Fire but with a metallic paint job and some light up features and just for the benefit of the lighting why don't we turn this one on as well 
Let's see this. Come down to here, open up this, switch this light on, and now we've got the cockpit lit up. I mean, it really, it really did do a good job with the light up part, but there you go. There he is, fully armored and lit. It really is cool to see it. So final recommendations on the Kits Concept VF1S God of Flame, or their version of a Jetfire. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. I'm going to give it a partial recommendation, and let me explain why. This figure actually looks really nice, both in robot mode and jet mode. Got some pretty nice accessories in the fast pack, and overall it does display very well. But where this thing falls down is materials and build. It really is not built well. You have to be extra, extra careful when you're handling it. You can transform it, but I don't recommend transforming it more than once. So that means picking the mode you want it in. If you want it in robot mode, put it, get it set up, put it in robot mode, and leave it. If you want it in jet mode, transform it once and leave it in jet mode. It's not meant to go back and forth, honestly. It does look good in both modes, but it really just doesn't have the durability to, to transform multiple times. Now, as far as the price point, it's a $260 figure. And let me just bring in the G1 Jetfire again. And honestly, the scale is really kind of what throws me off. At 172nd scale, it's smaller than the original G1. It's only nominally bigger than the New Age figure, but it costs a lot more. And for me personally, I actually prefer the G1 Jetfire Valkyrie mode. I just think it looks cooler. It's more fun to play with. It's more durable. Uh, even the New Age, at half the price of this guy, if you have that Valkyrie version, is better. It's more articulated. It's more fun. It's more fun to trans transform. It's more durable. So that leaves this in a weird point, a weird price point, and a kind of a weird place as far as, you know, if you're a Jetfire fan, I'm not sure this, you know, will fit the bill for, for really anybody, unless you're a huge fan of this character and you like the Valkyries. Um, now, someone told me that this is just the level. This is how these things are built. If you're a cross collector, this is kind of how they are. Well, I feel bad for you guys because this is not very fun. You know, it just doesn't feel fun. Uh, but that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Carl S. for sending this for review. And we'll see you next time.